Hey, and welcome to the world according to Larry. You know what we're gonna do today? I'm gonna teach you how to make beer. The very first thing you need to do when you're brewing is sanitize. And there's gonna be different phases of the brewing process. What we're gonna do today is actually, we're gonna boil the wort, we're gonna start the fermentation. We have to sterilize our primary fermenter. I don't necessarily know that you're gonna save money, it's, but it will, be, it will be the same cost as good beer. You know, if you're buying really expensive beer, it will save money. If you drink Bud Light, it's not gonna save money. But if you're buying, you know, if you're buying trendy, hoppy beer, you're buying uh, micro brews or craft beers, it will be cheaper to brew it yourself. And it's really easy. I'm gonna say over and over during this video and in future videos, that beer is a natural living thing. And it was an accident. It's really a gift to humanity. When you think about it, when you actually learn how to brew beer, it should come clear to you that the, the first person who drank beer was probably drinking out of a bucket in a barn or a wheelbarrow. He had some grains, they got wet, they got dried out, and they got wet again. The water sat in there, wild yeast came in, landed, and he got a, a frothy liquid and he tasted it. Maybe it was good, maybe it was bad, but he got a feeling off it. That, and then, you know, we have refrigeration now, but beer is a really good way to preserve grains, right? Particularly in the northern countries, you know, you have grain silos and you're protecting them from rats and mice and other vermin so that you can live through the winter. How can you do that? Well, you cook it. You cook it and you put it in liquid and you then put it in a bottle and the vermin can't get at it. The additional added effect is that the water then was pretty crappy. People were pooping in it. Now you have something that you could drink that gave you calories and didn't give you diarrhea. It didn't make you sick. So beer really was, to early man, a gift from God. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sanitize the equipment that we need today. The equipment I'm gonna be needing today is the brew kettle, which is this. This is what I use to get the wort out. Wort is the, basically, the food for the yeast. It is sugar water. This, this brew kettle is gonna to be too big, too heavy to risk pouring it all at once into this small funnel. This funnel has a strainer in it that will really get most of the solid matter out. We're gonna to try to take as much work off this as possible, but we need this. this these need to be sterilized. The brew kettle is gonna boil. This, this is a camping pot and I will sterilize this. This is the handle. Um, you could use any, any pot that you use. A stirring spoon and the brew kettle, which has a little scorched um, sugar on. This is the most important piece of equipment that you're gonna need that you don't scrimp on. Right, this is a 20 quart Revere Ware copper cap, copper clad bottle. It's the size, right? And it should be stainless steel. You don't want to use aluminum. You don't want to use something that's cheap. 20 quarts is five gallons. We're going to put at least three gallons of water in here. And what happens is as this gets hot and all that sugar, it swells. And you could have a boil over with this five gallon pot, all right? And a boil over is a disaster, particularly if you're married. Your wife is gonna hate you. The second most important part. This is the primary fermenter, right? They come in five, six gallons. I have a six gallon primary fermenter here. You could use a bucket. You could get something like this. Uh, what you need is an airlock. I prefer this style airlock. There is another style that looks sort of like the plumbing underneath your sink. It's got a U in it. 
I find I don't like those because water settles in there. I have had instances when I'm trying to pull the lid off. As I pull the lid off, the suction pulls that nasty water into the beer. All right, so I feel that because the way this one's designed, you see, I feel the risk of nasty water flowing back in to my, my beer is less. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the stopper in the sink. I'm gonna stop filling it. And I'm gonna add 60 milliliters of bleach to this. And then I'm gonna start adding uh, the equipment that's going in there. You want, to, you want to get everything in your sanitizing solution. This lid's important that we, we get that in the sanitizing solution. Air bubbles mean there's not contact with the, the bleach. All right, so I'm putting that in there. The funnel goes in. I love the, I love the smell of bleach. Long spoon. So you see some, some of this stuff is hanging out. Well, we're going to periodically turn it. Uh, we we want to leave it for contact time for at least 20 minutes because stuff is hanging out. We may leave it in there longer than 20 minutes, particularly with the lid. So let's look at some ingredients. So this is a strainer bag It's going to go in. I'm going to free for, float the grains. You can get small muslin bags and tie it up. Uh, same thing with the hops. I'll use this one for the hops. Hopefully we can minimize the amount of troweling of the, the screen we have to do. Here are the ingredients. Now, this is not a recipe. This was me. I was gonna do a simple ale, and I will be honest, I hate ales. I don't like the flavor of an ale. To me, it tastes like honeydew melon, and that's the flavor from the yeast. I like to make uh, lagers. And halfway through shopping, I, I wound up throwing in the towel. So I did buy chocolate malt. This is a pound and five ounces. This is American six row. This is a pound and five ounces as well. It just was, I filled the bag, then I took it to the mill. You're gonna wanna mill the, um, the grains. If you go to a local brew shop, they may have a mill that you can have it milled. I have one, two pounds of dry sparkling amber malt. I have one can of malt extract, unhopped. You have to be careful when you're buying cans of malt extract, some will be hopped, some will be unhopped. And when you're buying like, when you, this is gonna be a, a steeped grain and malt extract recipe. There are all malt extract kits that you could buy. It's just cans, oh, that's all you're doing. It's cans, pouring them into water, boiling them, and so the hops are already in there. My American Lager yeast. This is priming sugar. We're not gonna use this today. This is three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna add this during the bottling phase. This is a pound of corn sugar. And then I have Cascade hop pellets, which I use a lot. Fuggles hop pellets, which I don't use that much of. I would recommend you writing down the ingredients that you have in case you like your recipe. I have a book here with various beers I've made over the years. I love this recipe for the Oktoberfest. It's a lot of work. One ingredient I always add to my beer is gypsum. I have really hard water, uh, and I, I, it was so hard. It's like ice. It's not a difference to my family and my father. So we, we go back to Scotland as plasterers. Gypsum is, is part of that. And so it's in my blood. So I add it to my beers. So you want to make sure that you rinse all of the sanitizing solution, i.e. bleach, off of your brew kettle, all your equipment. Um, and we're gonna fill it with three gallons of water. Not really gonna measure. So I said it's a five gallon. So a little more than half full is gonna be three gallons. It's not rocket science. 
like I said, it was an accident. So don't be stressed and start simple. Don't start with a food beer. Don't make mango, pumpkin, spice, ale. Do something plain and simple and then grow from there. That's about half full. First step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the grains to the brew kettle. Got the stove on, on high. I'm gonna put the bag in and I'm gonna add the grains. I'm gonna bring it up to about 105 degrees. Well, let's sit there for a little bit. One of the things I recommend we you use on canned malt extract is put it in the oven. I preheated the oven to 170 degrees. I'm gonna take the lid off. This stuff is thick and gooey. And if I can get it warm so it pours out, it's, it's much easier. That was a good idea. It smells so good. So we're gonna put that in the oven. A pound, five ounces of malted chocolate barley. pound, five ounces of American six roll. You don't need to use one of these, but it does make life easier. I'm trying to keep it off the bottom. that color, huh? Hit over 100 degrees, 115. I'm gonna move it, let it sit a little bit, okay? I'm gonna go over here. Back on the heat, I'm gonna bring it up to about 150 degrees, shut the heat off and let, let it sit there longer for about half an hour. Currently we're at 118. We get to 150, well let it sit. So again, it's no recipe. You want to convert the starches into sugars so that the yeast can eat it. We're at 150 degrees. What I'm going to do is turn the heat off currently. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to turn it on to low. And I'm going to allow, open this up, allow these grains to free flow. And we're going to let this sit for half an hour at 150 degrees. You'll notice if we were going to throw this all through the filter in the funnel, how quickly it would clog. And you'll be amazed at how much gets through this, this mesh. And we're going to let this steep like tea. We've been at it 150 for half an hour. Now I'm going to bring it to 170 slowly. I'm gonna keep it there for half an hour. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this to a stable 170 degrees. I just stirred it, we're at about 168. Honestly, you don't have to be this precise. You're gonna see recipes that say 158, 143 and a half degrees. Beer was an accident originally. You, you'll get beer. If you wanna get consistent, yes, okay. All that math is important. If this is your first time doing it, don't worry about that stuff. You'll get through it and you'll have good beer. I'm sitting for half an hour or more. We're gonna drain the grains. Drain the grains. Drain, drain. I'm gonna catch whatever drains out. I'm not worried about the sanitization of it because I'm gonna turn this heat up to high. I'm 
Most laggers are not dark. says even the the just grain wart starts to boil looks like it's taking up more space within the kettle look at this this is before I add the sugar this this is why you need a big pot if you don't have a big pot you gotta have a boil over this will eventually break down and go away this is some scary stuff. Look at this. If I'm blowing on it, it really makes a big difference. But we want to reduce the temperature. Because this was half full, and now it's almost boiling over. And I haven't added anything. And we're about to. Some people tell you it's the hops. Some people tell you it's the, the uh, malt extract. I haven't added any of that yet. This is just the steeped grains. It, I turn the temperature down, it's still boiling, but now it's half full. I'm gonna remove it from the, the heat. I'm gonna add the malt extracts and stir it in because it's so heavy, they're gonna sink to the bottom and then stick and burn. So we're gonna move this off the heat. We'll add the malt extracts, stir them in, and then put it back on the heat. extract from the oven 170 degrees see how liquid it is it's is gonna work on our benefit stir it now we're gonna do the dry malt extract Second pound of dry malt extract. I'm gonna stir this in. sugar. So back to the heat. Now that's all, all the sugar's blended in. And we cannot leave. So now I'm gonna add the full ounce of the Cascade hops as boiling hops.
So as this comes to a boil, it is gonna fill this pot and it could boil over. And that's why you have to stay here. Eventually, it will just collapse. It's called the hot break. You, you cannot leave this pot until that happens. Got this on high, and we, we got a rolling boil going. You can see it's getting a little high. I'm just gonna watch it and stir it. I want this to then diminish. And this is why you want a big pot. I'm just blowing on it, and that brings it down quite a bit. So you see right now, it's not really growing. No. My point being is that it's not as scary as it was before. I'm sort of maintaining. Blow on it here and there and it goes right back down. See, I wasn't paying attention. I'm trying to fix my camera. Best to clean this stuff up while it's still molten. It's gonna get much harder to clean up later. See that? I almost missed that one. This has been boiling for half an hour, and I'm gonna put half the fuggle hops in right now. 15 minutes later, I'll put another half in. Uh, the, the remaining half. So it's been 45 minutes and we still haven't had this oil diminish. I'm waiting for it to happen. But we're going to add the last of the hops with 15 minutes left to boil. I will tell you though that if this does not, this frothing does not go away in 15 minutes, I will continue to boil until I see smooth, smooth liquid. You'll understand once you see it. So this is the last of the fuggle spots. See that? That's what we want. We've hit the hot break. All that volume is gone. All the froth is gone. So it's time to shut the heat off. We've been boiling this for an hour. We will take our hot bag out. Ugh. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. GoPro, are you still focused? Well, this seems like a good point to end the video for today. Make sure to come back later to see the second installment on how to make beer. You've been experiencing the world according to Larry, and I'm Larry, and this is the world I live in. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like it, share it. I would love to hear your comments, and I would appreciate it if you subscribe. And until then, I'm in my world.